Hello there, avid listeners. Thanks again for tuning in to Sin's Workshop. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. All right, so today we are going to be talking about Hope, A History of the Future by Gigi Kellner. Um, I have to say, I really did find the novel to be very interesting, but I think one of the detriments of the novel um, is really just one singular character and that's going to be Joyce and she's the story she's how we open up the story you know Joyce is at home um, everyone's out you know at school or at work and she's home taking care of her daughter who's homesick and she hears a thump from the library and it's like what's that this mysterious book just literally fell out of space and time in her living room and she starts reading it and this story is about, you know, it takes place in the future, and it is about three characters, right? It's about these three different characters trying to survive pretty much natural disaster after natural disaster. You've got drought, you've got flooding, you've got, um, I mean, cataclysmic <laughs> um, heat waves and pretty much natural disaster after natural disaster all do because of pollution um, and she's reading this book but it's her internal narrative that is not really interesting because what she's reading is actually really interesting like you grow attached to Ruth and the other characters you know you do grow attached to Gabe and Mia these are characters that you want to read about their their story in the in the future and how the future has changed I mean honestly it's such a hopeful future um, I think one we would all love to imagine you know even in the bleakest of circumstances and that's what really grabbed me as a reader reading about these three stories but we're reading them through the other characters and I just think um I think Joyce wasn't <laughs> was not a good way to start the story because her internal narrative was so uh, annoying um to put it simply I wasn't really captivated by her I was just I was kind of put off from her I didn't believe her as a character she really just seemed like she was just there. She was just a catalyst to get the story going, right? And that's how she felt. I mean, half the time she's looking for a cigarette because she's reading this book and I guess it's getting her all worked up and she's going back to smoking, right? And then she'll stop reading to be like, huh, what's the time? Oh, I better get, I better start dinner. Oh, what's the time? I haven't even started dinner yet. I mean, I get it. It's showing the reader that she show and she is so engrossed in the story that she's forgetting about everyday things, you know, and she's going back to her nervous habit. I just didn't like it personally because it didn't feel natural, didn't feel real. Um, you get the motive behind it. But considering what she's reading, I wanted more substance for her. You know, that being said, early on she does tend to question the validity of the story she's reading, and I did find that to be interesting to me. But, oh my god, I was just kind of annoyed. It's just like, really? You're going back to thinking about smoking again? Like, there's nothing else on your mind as you're reading this? futuristic text about natural disasters and a girl losing her family and people on a boat like really that's it that's this is all I'm gonna get from you it didn't seem like the best way to start the story and I feel like some people might not want to push through past Joyce and really she's the only narrative that's kind of annoying um you know her daughters her son everyone else who picks up the books and reads it and 
this is going to sound silly, but for me, the most unbelievable part of it is they just open to a random part in the story. <laughs> and I'm just like, who does that? Who just picks up a book and opens to a random part in the book? Granted, it's a history book. It's the history of the future, but it reads like a story. And that's the part where I'm just like, I can't, I can't 100% get behind that unfortunately um <laughs> I just can't and I think that's just like the reader in me honestly because who does that who who does that who just picks up a book and then she's like hmm, I'm gonna open to the middle of the book and start reading from here I mean that's just the weirdest part of the book to me <laughs> but other than that um I really did think it was a really good story. And I really do think people should give it a chance. You know, um, if you are if you don't like Joyce, that's, that's fine. She's only in there for the beginning bit. She's there later on as she interacts with the family as they're reading the book. And I like the stories, again, of Gabe, Mia, and Ruth. There were similarities for me to um, David Mitchell's Cloud Atlas. Um, just in the whole atmosphere. So if you like Cloud Atlas, I really do think you are going to like this book because the atmosphere of the futuristic storytelling and how they're telling the stories and how, you know, they talk about how their laws have changed and how the structure of society has changed to prevent something like this from ever happening again. I mean, I thought it was absolutely beautiful. Um, I thought, you know, it, and the novel is based on scientific projections as well as historical and legal precedents. And I love that Kellner takes that and envisions a future. It's not all glorious and happy and perfect, but she's taking it, she's using it and be like, hey, look at this society that has learned, you know, that has learned from the history and it's just continuing to really better themselves without all the prejudices and racism um, and negligence for animal life and the environment. I really do think that Kellner gives us a story of hope and I'm so glad she named the book Hope because it really it makes you think as a reader as you're reading this as you're reading about Gabe and and Ruth and Mia. <sighs> These are three different stories, but the way that they intermingle, the way the story ends, it just, it leaves you with this sense of hope, you know? Like, hey, this is a future we can get to. It is achievable. Maybe we don't have to go through the natural disasters and, heat waves and flooding and storms that the characters themselves are going through. Maybe we can start achieving this future now. All we have to do is look at, I mean, she, she, and she does, she pretty much has this whole document in the book of the society's new laws. And I'm just like, why are we not here yet? <laughs> that's just me questioning um, the world like why are we not at this point you know we do have people who think like this um, maybe they're just not enough you know or maybe we just don't listen to them or maybe they get drowned out in all of the nonsense of the world um, I mean it really was quite beautiful in the end in the end this story and you know, now that I'm, I'm thinking about it, you know, when I finished reading the book, I was like, that's it? That's the end? But that was a good way to end the book. I say that because I wanted it to continue. I wanted it to go on. I wanted to read more of these characters. And when a book leaves me wanting to read more of these characters, I think the author has done their really a really good job. I think they've done a job um, connecting the reader to the text. And... It was beautiful. I know I when I first finished reading this book, I gave it a three because I was like, on 
yes, I wanted to read more of it, but I was like a little on the fence. I'm like, I don't know that I fully liked it because I wasn't a fan of the Denzel family. I thought they were just kind of, they were just kind of there. Yes, they were to tell the story of the text. You know, there really wasn't a whole lot of substance to them. Um, they were just a plot device. And that's why I gave it a three when I initially stopped reading it. But then as I wrote my review, I'm like, you know what? This book's actually really good now that I think about it. I can get past the Denzel family because they're like, they're not really there a whole lot in the grand scheme of theirs, in the grand scheme of things, <laughs> sorry. They're, they exist in the story, but it's okay to forget about them. So I kind of got over that. And I'm like, you know what? I'll go ahead and give it a three and a half. And now that I'm talking about it and really like fleshing out my feelings, I'm like, you know what? Maybe the story is more of a four. This seems to be a trend with me lately. I'm just like, I go from liking, a, well, no, there was one book that I went from liking to, went from loving to liking. But now the past couple of books that I read have gone from liking to loving. And I wouldn't say I love this book. Um, but I really like it more than I did when I finished reading it. Now that I've had some time to just think about it and think about the meaning of it and think about the message of it. It's just like, you know what? I can get past the Denzel family. I can get past Joyce. They're not important. <laughs> the story that is important is Ruth, Mia, and Gabe, their story. That's what's important to me. And... I really, really liked it. At the end of the day, I really have to say it did leave me with a sense of hope and it did leave me with this sense of, you know what, maybe this is a future we can achieve now. You know, maybe we don't have to wait um, for disaster to strike or for things to just get so out of control. Maybe we can do it now, you know. She literally based, laid out all the laws for, <laughs> for us. Kellner. And I'm like, maybe Kellner's from the future. <laughs> um, <coughs> but you know what? <laughs> Pardon me. She did a really good job. You know, she did a really, really good job making the story very believable, making it pull the reader in and really connecting to the reader. And again, she did leave me with a sense of hope. So I'm going to go ahead and give hope a history of the future. Um, four stars. Like I said, when I initially stopped reading it, it was a three for me, but now that I've really like sat down and reviewed it, it's, and thought about it, it's a four. Um, cause again, Denzel family, they don't really matter. Um, <laughs> they're just kind of there to tell the story of hope. So really, really liked the book, thoroughly enjoyed it. I really appreciated it. And you know, I really do think everyone should give this one a shot. So it's it's a solid four out of five for me. Um, so on that note, please support the author by purchasing the book um, or getting the book from your local library. You can leave a review just like me. If you can't afford the book, a great way to support the author is to just by spreading the word of it um, on social media. And on that note, I hope you all continue to support me here by liking this podcast, subscribing to it, and sharing it with all your book-loving friends. Have a great rest of your day, and as always, happy reading.